You never change, no matter the time. You are good to me. Every day gets sweeter. Every day gets better. 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 Every day gets sweeter. When I thought you ran out of things to do, you keep on getting back. <laughs> Just when I thought you ran out of ways to move, you keep on getting back. Oh, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Yeah. Oh my God, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Yeah. Oh my God, keep on getting back. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> nice spring day, huh? How about that? Yay. It's all right. <laughs> Welcome to Caring Community. And uh, if you're able, rise and uh, worship with us.
praise is rising. Praise is rising. Hearts are turning to you. We turn to you. Away, washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. You're not on yet. I'm on. You're not on. I'm on. I didn't want any accident happening, you know what I mean? Praise God. This is family. I, I, you're my family. I don't care what I share with you. You're my family. So. Hey, great to see all of you. Some of we haven't seen for a while. We are, we are thanking the Lord that you're here with us today. I'm going to pull out a Connect card. We haven't shared this. Like, we have Connect cards. If you are new, first time here, if you've been coming for a while, these cards give us your information. If you're willing to share it with us, you just fill it out. Pull in the offering box. It's at the back of the sanctuary on your way out. And it's also for those of you who've been coming for a long time. If you have a prayer concern or anything you want to share, fill out the Connect card, drop it in the offering box, and we will get it. So Connect card is what they look like. They're in the basket by the offering box, so just fill it out, drop it in the offering box. 
Um, we're going to try to streamline announcements. I'll do my best. Uh, I trust that you would look at the uh, bulletin. But one thing today came up, uh, Kent uh, was going to teach the older kids in Children's Church today. And I believe Marla's taking him to the hospital this morning. So we're going to be praying for him a little bit. Uh, Pat's going to lead us in that. Uh, so there is no Children's Church for the older kids. And I also want to encourage parents in reference to Children's Church and nursery. We're going to encourage you to uh, leave right after the sermon and go back and get your child in consideration for the teachers, the volunteers that are back here. So uh, if, you, if at all possible, you can leave right after the sermon to go back and uh, retrieve your children. <laughs> retrieve them. Um, one thing I do want to point out in the bulletin, that's uh, the hospitality and fellowship coordinator. Over the years, we've had uh, two ministries, one hospitality and the other one fellowship. We're going to try to combine those two. It's going to take a very special person or persons to make that happen. Someone that has leadership ability because we don't want you doing it all on your own. That could get very time consuming and it, and it won't happen. You will not succeed if you try to do this on your own. On your own. But if you are, uh, you have that ability and you're considering that position, then please let us know. Pray about it. Let us know. But if you don't want to be the leader and you still want to be part of the hospitality team or fellowship team, then let us know that too. And then when that God provides that leader, they already have other people in place. That's what it's all about. Because there's. There's a lot of, fellowship is very important to the body of faith. Very important. And we have a great time. The caring community, we have fun and fellowship, and we use it to uh, encourage each other. So there's events coming. We have a, you'll see in there also, we have a, a anniversary coming up, 30-year anniversary here at Caring Community. And we want to we do that on Sunday, November 7th, right after church. So that would be one of the, one of the things that a, hospitality fellowship coordinator would work on. Uh, church picnic. Well, we have a team in place for that. There's three of us, but we'd like the hospitality fellowship coordinator to uh, work with us on that as well. So that's, that's the things that's happening, but pray about that. If the Lord's leading you, please let us know. Hospitality fellowship coordinator. The rest of the stuff in there, you can uh, trust that you'll read it. Um, yeah, hands and feet's going out today. Keep in mind, they need some help right after the service. So if you can, if you got the time to do that, to help them out with that, and Pat will, Pat will be leading us in prayer uh, in a little bit. I just want to bring your attention to the stewardship thought on the back of the bulletin. Occasionally, we like to, we like to highlight these and read them. This is important ones from First Chronicles. King David said, but who am I? And who are my people? that we should be able to give as generously as this. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. O oh Lord our God, as for all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name, it comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God. The result of God giving to us and us giving back to God is joy for us and praise for the Lord. Pat? Just real quickly, um, the reason that Kent went to the hospital, complications of diabetes. So um, if you've ever noticed him walk recently, he's really struggling to walk. So we want to pray for him. Uh, also, I got a phone call from Glenda, punching Glenda this morning. Um, most of you do not know this. She had some surgery recently, and she released me this morning to tell you that. It was sensitive surgery. That's why she wasn't on the prayer chain. Um, and she's doing fine physically, but she, she literally on, on the phone this morning begged me to have us pray for her. She is struggling emotionally. She is struggling spiritually. And uh, when she had the surgery, they gave her some pain medicine and it acts, ended up being a double dose. They misdosed it, so when she was taking her pain meds every four or six hours, she was actually getting a double dose of a narcotic. So she's struggling with that as well. So we really need to pray for Glenda and for Punch, who is, has his own physical issues, and he's trying to take care of her as well. 
So we want to pray for Kent and Marla. We want to pray for Punch and Glenda. And we want to pray for hands and feet. Okay, plenty to pray for. All right? So stretch out a hand in whatever direction you want to pray. Get around people. And uh, let's do what family life is really about. Let's pray for one another. God, thank you that we can come together as a family and lift one another up. Really, that's one of the main functions that we see in the body of Christ in scriptures to encourage one another, to come alongside one another, to speak courage into each other. And Paul says so many times we do that during prayer when we intercede for one another into a realm that has power it is the true realm we live in, the spiritual realm. So Lord, we pray for Kent and Marla, for Marla to leave and go get her husband and to take him to the hospital. God, we don't know what's going on. Complications of diabetes. What does that mean? Your mind can run wild with that. I pray that you give them peace right now as a husband and wife. Fill them with your peace. But if there is something that needs to be uncovered, something need, needs to be diagnosed, a change that needs to happen, show that to them so they can take the steps necessary to continue to live as a husband and wife and a brother and sister in this family of faith that bear fruit. They are, they are needed and they are fruitful. And so we pray, God, according to your plans and purposes, you will bring a healing into Kent's physical life so he can continue to function and bear fruit. God, for Glenda and Punch, um, <clears throat> she acknowledges that this, the, the, the fear, the, the emotional bondage is something she has wrestled with for a long time. And, and I believe there's some follow-up that's going to happen so uh, with our, our women's prayer ministry to get her free from that. But Lord, right now in their home for Punch and Glenda, that you would come in and you'd fill them with your presence and your peace. Lord, thank you that physically she's getting better, but speak into her mind your truth, your peace, how valuable she is to you. Give them physical strength as Punch tries to take care of her. But Lord, we believe there's a process you want to work them through to bring a deliverance from this fear and anxiety that has plagued Glenda for a very long time. I think she's ready. She acknowledges she's ready. Pray with God you will move through through the ministry you've established here to bring Glenda freedom and deliverance from this anxiety and this fear that she lives in. Minister to her and break, break the physical bondage of this pain medicine that was mistakenly given to her. God, break it from her so she does not become addicted to her. Protect her from that. Um, Lord, what happens in many of these situations, we're praying now, is things go unaddressed and they end up where hands and feet ministers end up people being homeless, that they're, they're in distress and in despair. So we pray blessing on hands and feet as they go out and they feed and they clothe and they minister to the least of these. They are struggling in many ways and they're not just bringing physical food. They are, and it's important, and physical clothing, but they are speaking spiritual life into these people. So we pray you will bless them. You bring an anointing. You give them divine appointments. You protect them, encourage them, strengthen them, bring them back safely to us, and round some people up when they come home that we can give them that hand they need at the, at the back end when they unload. God, all that we do here, all that we do, is for your honor and glory that we might know you, make you known, and be transformed. And we need your power and your presence to do that. Thank you that you are faithful. We bless you and we love you. We continue to worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. We serve a holy God. If you would please rise. And a little uh, note about this song. We normally do this men and women back and forth. Uh, I have a hard time reaching the high notes, and that's what they put the men on. So uh, <laughs> can we do it this way? <laughs> Tenors and sopranos take the high, and uh, altos and basses take the low, and it'll, all, it'll be a good time. OK. That's right. Just, just sing, you know? OK. <laughs> Follow, I will follow, and I will listen. 
serves, and I will love you. I will love you all of my days. All of my days. I will Lord of Lords, you are King of Kings, you are mighty God, Lord.
and covers me. He became sin, who knew no sin, that he might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. song is very descriptive of the God that we serve. And again, you can take pieces of this song and sing it against each other and it comes out really nice. So if, you, if something lands on you while you're singing this, you can stay on that verse and it'll blend just great. <laughs> You are here, healing 
worship you. You are He, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are He, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. I in the darkness, my God, that I worship you. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop Stop. I worship you. Never stop. You never stop. You are here. Even when I don't feel it, you're every heart. When I don't feel it, I worship you. Never stop. Never stop. I worship you. Never stop. Never stop. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Lord, we thank you for all that you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness. Lord, we just worship you and thank you for all your blessings. I ask that you be with Pat as he comes. Speaks the message. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, the family of faith has responded. Older kids, you will have children's church. Has some people in the family say, hey, I can do that. It's a nice day. We'll go outside and figure something out, right? And that's what they're going to do, which is awesome. I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't step on it. <clears throat> All right. Wow. Hey, somebody say amen. We got a crowd up here, right? Fabulous. All right. Right, a man brave enough to wear Eagle's shirt? All right, man, I'll tell you that. All right, am I, am I right? Huh? That takes a little bravery these days. Okay, so let's pray. Stretch out a hand. Come on, let's pray for him. God, thank you. Thank you for this generation. This generation, as the worship team just sang, as Bobby prayed, I, I pray that this would be the generation that, that 
absolutely understands, believes, and walks in the fact that you're the way maker, that you're the miracle worker, you're the light in the darkness, you're the one that has the answers. And they will not only live that themselves, they'll, they'll project you to the world around them. They'll have that kind of influence. So as they go to their classes, boy, what a gorgeous day. Just bless them. Thank you for the teachers. Thank, for, thank you for those in the family who've just stepped and said, hey, I'll help out, I'll help out, I'll do it. This is family business here. And we thank you for it and give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, church said, amen, amen. amen. All right. There they go. There you go. You gonna hang with me for a little? No, he's not. No, no, that's not happening. <clears throat> do you actually believe that? <clears throat> that he's a way maker? You know, we're praying now for Kent and Marla and praying for Punch and Glenda, but how about you? You know, is he, is, is he able to make a way in your situation, in your circumstance? He's a miracle worker. A lot of you, I know some of the stories of what you're facing, and uh, you need a miracle under the surface. You need that miracle to come to the surface in your life and to play out in your life. That's who he is. And uh, Jesus paid a tremendous price for that to happen for us. I want to talk about that today. Last week, we, we uh, <clears throat> looked at Jesus' transfiguration, a mountaintop experience for Peter, James, and John, where Jesus unveils, he reveals his true nature. His nature is glory, the sheer weight of who God is, his presence, his power, his promises, his ability to pull those miracles off in your life. It is his glory and through relationship through relationship our heavenly father says to peter james and john and he says to us this is who he is this is my son whom i love and then he says listen to him don't just hear it don't just get information but let the reality of what jesus says and who he is his character and his truth let it change the way you live let it transform you so what, what uh What's what Hoot was praying in the, in the office this morning. We got done with the men's class. It was a good class this morning, closing out 2 Thessalonians, and, and Hoot prayed for us. He said, Lord, that, that this word would not just get in our hearts and our minds, but it would be lived out in our lives. That's what he says. That's what it means to listen to him. Don't just hear it. Do it. Listen. Live it out. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take living out the truth and the character of Jesus in our lives in order to go through the valley situations that we face in this world. We do it by his way. We do it with his truth. It's a huge battle. Remember last week, right before the transfiguration is the time where, where Jesus starts to tell the disciples, I'm gonna have to go to Jerusalem. And I'm gonna be killed. And Peter says to him, Lord, that should never happen to you. No, 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 no. And what does Jesus have to say to him? Get behind me, Satan. Why? You do not have in mind the ways of God. You have in mind the ways of man. That's the battle. The battle that we, we live in is, do you live the ways of God or do you live the ways of man? We're going to throw that up, Ralph. Ralph's punch or pinch hitting for, there it is. He's on it. All right? The ways of man are, are, are flowing from deception. They f flow from corruption what James 4 says, Galatians 5 says. James 4 says literally, he says, do not slander. Literally, it means to build yourself up on the backs of somebody else. That's the ways of man. I will oppress and I will push down so that I can be lifted up. I'll divide every, everybody into different groups so that my group can be better than your group. And we'll, that, That's the ways of man. That's how we dominate and how we oppress. But the ways of God are built on truth. He is the truth. He speaks the truth. He came as a demonstration of the truth to us. That's who Jesus is. And it is the battle you and I face every day. It just didn't start in the uh, 2000s. It didn't just start recently. It goes all the way back to Genesis 3. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 5. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman... Did God really say? Is God telling you the truth? 
That's the implication here. You must not eat from any tree in the garden. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. And you know from previous studies, that's not what God said. He didn't say anything about touching it. What's the, what's the enemy say? You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. So Satan is accusing God of not telling Adam and Eve the truth, of holding back on them. And then the implication is, says, and by the way, I am telling you the truth. That's the battle. The battle is the truth, the ways of God, versus the corruption, the deceit, the deception of the ways of man. The ways of man. You can decide for yourself what's good and bad. Isn't that what we're living? Well, it's your truth. Whatever's good for you is your truth. That's not biblical at all, but it is the ways of man. You can decide for yourself what's good and evil. They both can't be right. God's saying, I am the truth. And Satan is saying, you decide for yourself. They don't coincide. They both cannot be true. Do you even care about what's true? What is truth? That's still at work today. Paul describes it in Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2. As for you, about believers now, he's writing to the church. As for you, caring community, you are struggling. Yeah, that's not what it says. You're what? Dead. Beyond, beyond saving apart from the power of Jesus. You are dead in your transgressions and sins in what you used to live when you followed what? The ways of the world under who? And of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. That's the battle. The ways of God, the ways of the world. It is on full display and it is the driving force behind the arrest and the trial of Jesus. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to do a little bit out of order. Um, you know, Palm Sunday is next Sunday, and the arrest comes after that. But we're going to just do things out of order because they are directly connected. What happens at the trial, what happens at his arrest, is directly connected to what he does when he comes in on Palm Sunday. We'll get to that next week. So are we okay with doing it out of order? You won't go crazy on me? You know, it's like, this is out of order. Okay, be a little, there'll be a flashback. We'll flash back next week. Okay, go to John chapter 18. Even if you do go crazy on me, we're still going there. We're still going to do it. All right, this is also in Matthew chapters 26 and 27. All the gospel accounts have his, his arrest, his trial, crucifixion, resurrection. We're going to look at the John 18 passage, maybe refer to some others. It's also in Matthew verse, chapters 26 and 27. Mark 14 and 15, Luke 22 and 23. So it's in all the Gospels. <clears throat> John chapter 18, we're going to start at verse 12. Verse 12, Jesus is arrested in the garden. He's betrayed by Judas. It's interesting that when, he, when he's arrested, they come for him. He says, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus. He says, I am, and all the soldiers fall down. All right, this is in the beginning of chapter 18. All the soldiers who are armed fall down when Jesus just simply says, I am, his glory, his glory. Okay? So then, then he says, oh, wait, I'm going to ask again, who are you looking for? He says, they say, Jesus. He says, I'm telling you, this is me. And then he says, if you want me, you have to let all my disciples go. Okay, why? Because he has prayed earlier that he would protect the disciples. So when you are walking with Jesus, here, here comes this, group, this detachment of soldiers. We're talking hundreds. Okay, on the flannel graph, you can't get all hundred on there. When I was a kid, you only get a couple of soldiers. You know, but, but there's hundreds of soldiers that come, and they're armed. This is, a, this is a, a crack group, and Jesus is in charge of this whole thing. He says, okay, you want me? You have to leave all these guys go. We also know that Peter draws his sword and cuts off Malchus's ear. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm a soldier, and one of my other soldiers gets his ear cut off, you're, you're toast. But he, Peter doesn't get touched. Why? Because Jesus is in control of this whole thing. By the way, he just heals the guy's ear. He heals his ear. Okay? 
So Jesus is sovereignly in charge of everything that's happening, but he is using the sin and the ways of the world in the people involved to bring it about. So let's pick it up in verse 12. Okay, they, are, they arrest him. 18, 12. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him, which I think is hysterical. Okay, this is, uh, this, is, this is Jesus who raises people from the dead, who has just spoken a word and they all fall over. Do you think binding him is somehow going to hold him if he doesn't want to go? It's very, but that's so human. That's the ways. We got him now. We got, oh, we got him now. Okay. They bound him and brought him first to Annas. We'll get to that. Who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. All right, he goes to Annas. Who is Annas? He, well, he's the father-in-law, but understand that his name means humble. But Annas was anything but humble. He was a former high priest, and this is very, very politically and powerfully driven. So Caiaphas is the actual high priest, but the guy behind the scenes that's pulling the political strings is Annas. That's why they take him to him. They take him to Annas. It's raw political power dressed up in religious garb. Somebody go, uh-oh. Okay. You're going to see in this trial, in this I mean, monkey trials, what it is, you're going to see exactly what's happening today, the ways of man at work. Okay? This is a kangaroo court that's coming. Okay? That's what's happening. It's raw political power. This trial is a means to get the Romans to issue an execution order. That's what this is about. There is no truth. Now, normally in a trial... You come in and evidence is presented to see if a person is guilty or not. But remember what they say, Caiaphas has already determined that they need to kill this guy, Jesus. He's a problem. So this trial is not about evidence. This trial is about a determined outcome that's already happened. We simply need to figure out how to get Rome to agree with us so we get an execution order because if he's executed from Rome, he's executed as a criminal. We don't want to stone him to death because that becomes a religious thing. He has to be, he has to be defamed as a criminal. They have an agenda they're working here. Here's what Caiaphas has said in John 11, verses 48 to 50. If we let him go on like this, meaning Jesus, who is healing people, doing great miracles, and drawing people to him, and therefore away from whom? Come on, come on, you're with me here. Them, all right? This is about power and position. And he even says that. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Our temple is the place where all the money comes in, where we get all of our wealth, and our nation is the group of people we are in charge over. So we lose power, wealth, position, comfort, all the stuff that's the ways of man. That's what they're trying to protect. That's what this is about. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize. Wake up, guys. Come on. You don't realize it's better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. Look, he's the troublemaker. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. That's the issue here. Truth has absolutely nothing to do with this. Nothing. Nothing to do with this trial. Let's pick it up in verse 19. Chapter 18, verse 19. Now, in 15 to 18, this is Peter's first denial. We're not going to touch those. Are, those are sermons in their own right. There's three denials. We're going to skip over the denials. I'm going to just stay with the arrest and the trial. Okay? So, after, he, parenthetically, John writes about Peter's denial. Meanwhile, verse 19. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. It's not Caiaphas who's doing the questioning. It's Annas. Because he's referring to him as the guy who's actually in charge. You'll see how this unfolds. 
I have spoken openly to the world. I want to go back to 19 because it's important. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. That's important. That, what he's questioning him about is important. We'll come back to that. Jesus said, I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, something untrue, something in error, Jesus replied, testify to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, not if, since, <laughs> because what does Jesus always speak? Truth, truth. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Verse 24, then Annas sent him still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. So Annas is the one who is doing the questioning and what is he trying to do? Remember, who, what's he questioning? About the disciples and his teaching. Annas is trying to expose and dismantle the disciples. He is assessing threat. How much of a threat is this guy Jesus? How much of a threat are his followers? Is there some kind of secret teaching that Jesus is doing that's leading to rebellion and sedition? I gotta find out what his actual end game is here. That's what, that's what Annas is up to. And he figures that Jesus will crack under the, in his interrogation and he'll expose this secret mission that Jesus is on. And Jesus says, look, I already told you the truth. This is what I always do. I taught it in the synagogues. All you gotta do is come and pay attention. Truth is who I am. Truth is what I do. Truth is what I teach. You, you, it's, it's available. There's no secret here because he is the truth. He doesn't just speak it. He is it. He doesn't just love people. He does, but he is love. It's his character. It's his DNA of who Jesus is. 79 verses in the New Testament. Jesus starts with, I tell you the truth. He's not, he's not saying that to remind himself. He's telling that to remind us. When you hear from Jesus, you hear truth. Always truth. Truth, here's what it literally means, aletheia in the Greek. What is true in any matter under consideration? Reality, fact. Does anybody need a dose of truth these days? What's been the last few years? What are we trying to figure out? Can I believe anything I hear? Can I believe what I see? Can I believe what I read? Can I believe what's online? Can I believe what's posted? What is true? Jesus. What his word says, the principles established in his word are true in any matter under consideration. Got relationship issues? There's truth in the Bible for it. Got money issues? Truth in the Bible for it. Got sexual issues? Truth in the Bible for it. Temptation issues? Truth in the Bible for it. Relationship of heading forward and stepping out in faith, the future, retirement. What's that look like? Will I have gold? Should I invest? There's a truth for it. True in any matter under consideration. What is true in things pertaining to God and the duties of man, moral and religious truth. Yeah, you know, and as long as you believe something spiritual, there's lots of ways up the mountain. It's okay. Just have a spiritual side to life. That's not true. Because the truth is what Jesus says. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Okay, true. In any matter under consideration, including how do you have a relationship with God? What's that look like? What are the expectations? What's God doing? What do you do? He's the one that's... He's one to, now he did speak in parables. He did do that. But the parables were based on principles of truth. And the reason he spoke in parables, he actually tells us in Matthew 13. He says, I speak in parables because their hearts are hard and calloused. They don't want to listen. They don't want to hear. They don't want to pay attention. They don't want to obey. 
And so he speaks in parables. They're still true principles. He has just veiled them some because he already knows his audience. And his audience is including Annas. Annas gets nowhere with Jesus. He's frustrated and violent. Are you prepared? Are you prepared that when we live the truth, because we are, we, are, we are a people of Jesus, so that when we live and declare the truth with gentleness and respect, Jesus is not in this guy's face. Are you prepared for the violence that will come? Now in America to this point, it really hasn't come very much. But can I tell you that it is coming? When you and I live and declare truth, when you post truth online, are you prepared for what's coming? Frustration and then violence is coming. That's what he, that's what he faces. So he sends him off to Caiaphas. And in Mark 14, it tells us that it's not just Caiaphas, that the whole Sanhedrin's there. So this is the whole Supreme Court of the Jews. So you got Pharisees, Sadducees, elders, teachers of the law, the entire kangaroo court's there. It's the ways of man. Now the high priest, according to Jewish law, he has the responsibility in a trial to present evidence and to present witnesses. And the first witnesses that he's required to present are witnesses for the defense. Required to do that. It never happens. Never happens. They don't care about truth. They don't care about justice. This is a predetermined outcome. It is the ways of man. So they, what they do is they bring a bunch of false witnesses together and they can't even get them to agree. Right? This is, they're, they're, I mean, the whole thing is a sham and they can't even pull it off well. That's how bad it is. So finally, the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? And here's his answer in Mark 14, 62. Here's what Jesus says. I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. It's the one thing in the entire trial that's true. It's true, and that's what they latch on to. They think that is blasphemy because he's claiming to be the Son of God. He's, he's God. Because why? Jesus always tells the truth. It's the only thing that's true in the whole trial. Is what Jesus says. It's blasphemy. So he is, he is condemned because of the truth. A, truth. a truth that they won't listen to. Are you prepared to be condemned because of the truth? A truth that the world will not listen to. Some will. And that's why we share it. Some will come, that's the move of the Holy Spirit. But by and large, the, the enormity of the culture, many are not going to listen. Are you prepared for the persecution that comes as we live out and share truth? Well, they think they've got him. They think they've got what they need now, so they take him off to Pilate. Let's pick it up in verse 28. <clears throat> then in, in between you have, you have Peter's second and third denial. Verse 28. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? This thing just absolutely drips of irony and hypocrisy. We want to be clean so we can eat the Passover. But we're going to hijack this guy's life, have him murdered, and he's the very Passover lamb that is the one they should recognize and be following. And they totally miss it, but we're going to go through religious rules and regulations so we can be clean and wear our religious clothing and go and have our Passover meal. And aren't we good followers of God? Not. Not. But before we laugh too much, 
do we do that? I want to put on a good show. I'm going to church. I, had, I, and I, carried, I didn't even take my little Bible this week. I got my little Bible. I'm going to carry the big one this week. You know what I mean? The one that's got all the reference points and stuff sticking out of it. And I sit down and it was good, man. I was in church. I was a good word. And I got all the references and whatever. And then we go out, right out the door and treat someone badly. Badly. It's exact same stuff. Exact same stuff we wrestle with. We want to be clean. That, that's, that's what they're doing. They don't, they don't see the truth of their own hypocrisy. No. Pick it up, verse 30 to 34. So, Paul, well, 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 what's the deal here? Now, there's a, an arrogance in them. If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. That's not what he asked. He asked, give me what the charges are. Tell me what the charges are. You can trust us. With, don't worry about it, Pilate. You can trust us. We, we, we already covered that. Okay, just understand that he's guilty. Let's get on with it. Why? Because they got religious stuff to do. Pilate said, take him yourselves. Judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected, which was true. That was true. Except at times they would even ignore that and they would stone somebody to death. That would just make it purely a religious thing. And he would give them, he would allow them to do that. Okay. <clears throat> this happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. She said in John 3 14, when I when I am, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. Jesus is actually in charge of his own death to draw people to him in salvation. Okay. So Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus has an interesting answer. Is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? Now, here's the deal. There is there's no law that's been broken. And, and, and Pilate, I mean, he instinctively knows this. He knows what's going on because he, he knows how the, these religious guys operate. He is not, Jesus is not a rebel. He's not a threat to the Roman government. But Pilate is not sure about that. So that's why he asked the, the question. The question is about that issue. So are you the king of the Jews? Is this merely a religious thing that I'm going to be like, oh, okay, I got to put up with this. Or is there actually a threat to Rome I got to deal with? And so Jesus answers based upon that. He says, is that your idea? Are you just, are you asking me, is there a crime against Rome? Am I a threat to Roman government? Or, or is this, is this just about your religious stuff? That's what, and, and that's what Jesus, Jesus is the one who's clarifying what is going on here. Now I got to stop and tell you this. Pilate has never met someone like Jesus. Five times in the account of his time before Pilate, five times, Pilate tries to set Jesus free. Okay, why? Because he has never met someone like Jesus. The, the, the religious leaders, they've never met someone like Jesus. Can I tell you that when you, when you come across Jesus, you will never meet someone like Jesus. Never. never. So Pilate... This is not like Pilate is this compassionate guy. Pilate is a ruthless politician. He is, he's famous for this stuff. He's famous for like killing people, murdering someone, whether there's law or not. It, it, this is not like Pilate is, I'm, great, I'm a great defender of justice. That's not it at all. This is the presence of the Messiah in front of him, and he does not know what to do with this guy. He is different because of who Jesus is in front of him. And so Jesus has to help him clarify what all this is about. Look at verses 35 through 37. Am I a Jew? It's because Jesus says, okay, this is about the, the religious thing. I'm not a threat to the Roman government. Am I a Jew? Pilate replied, is your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me, what is it you've done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, 
my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. Hmm. You are a king then, said Pilate. Potential threat. Jesus answered, you are right in saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. In other words, they hear it and they live it out. See, that's the, there's a difference between, between hearing a bunch of sermons, reading a bunch of devotionals, gathering a bunch of information, but not changing how you live. He says, everybody on the side of truth actually listens. It changes them. They live it out. He is not a threat to the Roman government. See, his kingdom is not the ways of man. What's the ways of man? The ways of man, power, oppression, war, violence, corruption, domination. What? To get and keep power. Jesus' kingdom is truth. It is the power of love, the power of forgiveness, the power of knowing God and his peace. Two very different kingdoms. And his kingdom is available to all, but you have to listen, you have to understand it and respond. In Luke 23, verses 5 through 12, the religious leaders, they try another tack now with Pilate. And in verse 5, they say this in Luke 23, 5, <clears throat> well, he stirs up the people, which literally means rousing them to the rebellion. Another lie. Another lie. All over Judea by his teaching. Judea is the, that's the place within Rome where the Jews live. Okay? All over Judea. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. Well, Galilee is Herod's jurisdiction. So Pilate, in between this, in the other passage of Luke, he sends him to Herod, off to Herod. Well, Herod is basically a puppet. Who the, who the Rome, he's the king of the Jews, but Rome allows him to serve. All right, so there's this political weird structure going on. And Pilate or, or, or Herod can't find anything wrong with Jesus either. But they have their fun with him. They mock him, abuse him, put a scarlet robe on him, but they can't find anything that's actually wrong because he hasn't done anything wrong. So they send him back to Pilate. We pick it up at verse 39. That happens all between verse 37 38. Verse 38 says this. What is truth? That's Pilate's answer. Jesus says, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate, what is truth? You know what that means? He's not looking for truth. What he's saying is, what does truth matter? Truth doesn't matter to me. I don't care about truth. Okay? I care about Staying in power. I care about not losing what I have. I care about the ways of man. That's what I'm interested in. That's what this is going to be about. Do you understand that? That's, what's, that? that's what happens in the world. The ways of man. It's where justice gets hijacked. Pick it up in verse and then he goes out and says, with this I find, he went out and said, I, I find no basis for a charge against him. Again, he's trying to set Jesus free. But it is your custom for me to you, one prisoner, over the time of Passover, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? <clears throat> they shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a Rebellion. So here's the irony of this. The irony and the corruption is that they set free a murderer and they murder the one who could set them free. Right? That's, that's, it's like this guy's a murderer. That, that's in, in one of the other passages in, in Mark. It says that he had committed murder, Barabbas. So they set free a murderer and murder the guy who could set them free. Now, we don't have time to unpack all of chapter 19, but I want to give you this challenge and then we're going we're to just summarize some things. 
we have two weeks until Easter. <clears throat> so the account of his arrest, trial, crucifixion, and resurrection are in all four Gospels. Okay? So what I want you to do is take no more than 10 minutes. You can if you'd like, but I want this to be a bite-sized chunk for you. Between five and 10 minutes every day and read through those gospel accounts of his arrest, trial, crucifixion, resurrection. In two weeks, you can read all four accounts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? If you can't find them, go to the end of each book. The end of Matthew, go back a couple chapters. There it is. It's at the end of all of them. Okay? It's easy to find. All right? We do that, you, you'll be changed. And don't just, don't just read it because, well, Pastor, I hate assignments from the pastor, but I'll do it. Then don't bother. But if you go to the heart and say, okay, God, I want, you to, I want you to show me about the ways of man versus the ways of God. What, what is it that I, in, in my life I need to know? How is it you want me to change the way I live because of, of walking through the word that is alive the next two weeks, okay? Do that? Yeah, whatever. But if you do, if you do, you'll be changed. You'll be touched by this, okay? 10 minutes a day, that's all it takes. Do it on your lunch break in the morning before you go to bed at night. That's all it's gonna take. If you do 10 minutes, you'll be able to read through all of it in two weeks. Okay. All right, so chapter 19. Pilate continues to set Jesus free. And Pilate, it says in, in verse 1 that, that Pilate took Jesus, had him flogged. It's one sentence. I was thinking about that. <clears throat> Flogging was, was I, I don't know if I have adjectives to describe to you how savage flogging was. But many, many prisoners that were flogged never made it to the cross. They died at the flogging. Loss of blood. Some of, some of them, uh, historically, it says some of them, even though they lived, they went crazy. They went mad. They actually went crazy in their minds because the, the, the beating was so brutal. Read Isaiah 53. Jesus was beat beyond. Where he, 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 you couldn't look at him. He didn't recognize who he was. Okay, so they have him flogged. Now, <clears throat> remember, the pilot's trying to, this is the, the sadisticness of the ways of man. Pilate has not rendered a judgment yet. Okay, so he could still be, Pilate could still release Jesus and find him not guilty. In the process of his trial, they have him flogged. Are you kidding me? So you get pulled over for drunk driving. Let's just use that. <clears throat> don't know, don't know your stories, whatever. You get pulled over for drunk driving. You get a court date. But before your court date, they say, well, before the court date, you have to do five years. So wait a minute, I even have my day in court. You will five years from now. Just rotten. This is not Russia. They do that in Russia. They do that in China. They do that in North Korea. You get charged, they just throw you in prison for a while. If you ever have a trial, there's no justice involved here. Jesus, the Pilate has not rendered a final decision, and he has him beat within an inch of his life. Man, I don't know about you. Sheldon was saying in the men's class about working in the yard yesterday here and then playing golf with his wife and we're all a bunch of old guys. We're in there lamenting about pain and this. We do not know pain. We don't. I mean, we have pain. We have it. We reckon it, but we don't, we don't know. I had a migraine last night. 1.30 1 in the morning, traipsing down the steps, going down to get my medicine. My head's like, pff, pff, pff. and right in the middle of it, I'm going back, I take my medicine. Pff, pff. I'm going back up the steps and Jesus goes, and no one touched you. So he said to me, I had this pain in my head. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. You talk about a headache. He, he, he was beat so savagely, the concussion and inability to even see his way to the cross. So I had to get Simon. He had Simon, he couldn't carry that thing. He was, he, he talk about pain. And this is, this is before there's any judgment. So finally they get, finally 
after this, Pilate takes him back out and goes, here's the man. What do you want me to do? He says, so he's hoping to set him free still. And what, take two steps and fall over dead? There's no justice. There's no truth. But here's what the religious leaders say. Finally, in 19 verse 7, the Jews insisted, we have a law and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. Finally, the truth comes out and it terrifies Pilate. Why? Because deep down, he knew, he knew all along, this guy is different. This guy is different. He knows, but political fear power and corrupts. The ways of man win. So Jesus tells Pilate in verse 11, Jesus, give me something here. Don't you realize I have the power to kill you or set you free? And Jesus tells him this in verse 11, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who has handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. During this time, he's, he even has a dream from his wife. In Matthew 27, he has a dream from his wife. She dreams and, and she tells him, I had a dream. This is an innocent man. You are crazy. Get your hands off of him. You're out of your mind to touch him. This is what Pilate gets. Now, I'm paraphrasing that part. But, but so he has this opportunity, but he misses it. Why? Ways of man. Ways of man. He relents to have Jesus crucified to save his power and his position. So which way <clears throat> are you leaning this morning? The ways of God or the ways of man? Is it a blend in your life? Well, I want the ways of God in certain areas, but over here, I want the ways of man because this nurtures something or feeds something or medicates something or I'm being rewarded for it, whatever it might be. And in any area where it's the ways of man winning over the ways of God, you are susceptible to, to great destruction in your life. The ways of God start with recognizing Jesus is who he says he is. He's the Messiah. He is the Savior. And that pain I was describing that he went through, he did it for you. You. By his stripes, we are healed. He didn't just do it for the world. He did. He did it for you. So if today you don't know him, you're listening online, then the response is to listen to him. To accept who he is as the Messiah, that he paid the penalty for your sin, and accept him as the Savior. And then more and more, for us who, who are the family of faith, the church, more and more knowing and living his ways, his truth, his words, his character. Where is it that you know the truth? It has been spoken to you. It has been encouraged in you. It has been challenged in you. And you are saying, no thanks. I will do it my way. The Holy Spirit is coming to you right now going, listen to him. Listen to him. Your way, the ways of man, will not work out the way you think they will. It won't work. Where are the ways of man pulling you, luring you to walk in sin? Ask him. Ask God. If you think, you're, oh, man, where, that's, what this, that's what Lent's all about, right? Stop and consider and ponder. Am I living, am I living equal to what God says? These next two weeks as you read, ask him that. Ask a trusted sister or brother. Come and say, hey, let's get some coffee. What's going, what do you think? Talk to one another. It's the family of faith. 1 John 1, 6, 7. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. It's not that you don't know it. We don't live it out. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Any area where you're walking in the ways of man, come back, repent, change, turn. Turn. Turn to Jesus and listen to him. Amen? Okay, you got two weeks. I would do it today if I were you. Today. Let's pray. Whew. Man, we're just, Lord, we're scratching the surface of your trial. So much more there. 
but enough for us to see the ways of man were corrupt and destructive, and they still are. So God, I, I pray for anyone in this room who is, who they understand they've heard about the ways of God, but they're living the ways of man. That through your Holy Spirit, you would draw them to that place. Draw them to recognize the path of the ways of man is destruction. It may be rewarded in the temporary here on this earth, but it is destruction. And they, they would take that step of faith and they would believe you for salvation as Savior. And for us who have done that, for us who is the family of faith, God revealed to us, where am I pursuing the ways of man? And it's affecting my fruitfulness for you, my witness of you, my intimacy with you. It's affecting my life. Reveal it to us, God, in these times that we would walk the ways of God, the character of God, the truth of God. We'd be that accurate commercial for who you are and not the ways of man. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, parents, during this closing number, go give all of our workers a break back there in the nursery, okay? Bail them out. All right, thanks. Worship team. Rise if you're able, as we sing Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. same John um, <clears throat> writes three small letters through in the back of the Bible and you know, he's learned a lot and walked in a lot and uh, he writes them again to the church and uh, this is one of our favorite verses my wife and I pray for our kids all the time pray for this church all the time John writes this I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth not that they know it, not that they can quote it, not that they can carry it, but they walk it out. That'll be your greatest joy as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go do it. Yeah.